Have you ever wondered why some fish move in large coordinated groups while others appear to be moving in a more random loose cluster? It's a fascinating spectacle to behold, isn't it? Well, it turns out, fish have different ways of sticking together. Some are schooling while others are shoaling. First, consider schooling fish. These are the ones you probably picture when you think of fish moving in groups. Imagine a ballet underwater, where each performer moves in harmony with the others, each fish turning, diving, or rising at the same speed and in the same direction. This is the essence of schooling fish behavior. Their synchronized movements are not just mesmerizing to watch, but have significant purposes. Schooling serves as a defensive tactic against predators, making it harder for an individual fish to be singled out. It also increases their success in finding food, with many eyes scouring the ocean's depths rather than just a pair. Moreover, the collective movement of schooling fish allows for better efficiency in swimming, reducing the energy expenditure for each fish. So, schooling fish are all about precise coordination and moving as one. But what about those other groups of fish? Enter shoaling fish. These fish groups are a bit more laid back. Unlike schooling fish who move in perfect unison, shoaling fish tend to stick together, but they move more independently. They don't always swim in the same direction, giving them a bit more freedom in their movements. Now you might wonder why do fish shoal? Well, there are a few reasons. For starters, it's a social thing. Fish, like many animals, enjoy the company of their own kind. Shoaling provides fish with a sense of community, and that can be comforting in the vast expanse of the ocean. There are also practical reasons for shoaling. Safety is a big one. A group of fish looks larger and more intimidating to predators. It's a classic case of strength in numbers. And finally, shoaling increases the chances of finding food. More eyes looking out means more opportunities to spot a tasty morsel. So, while shoaling fish also stick together, they have a bit more freedom in their movements compared to their schooling counterparts. Now that we've seen both schooling and shoaling fish in action, what really sets them apart? The key differences lie in the level of coordination, directionality of movement, and reasons for their behavior. Schooling fish exhibit a high level of coordination, moving as one cohesive unit, with each fish maintaining a fixed position relative to its neighbors. Shoaling fish, on the other hand, group together, but don't necessarily swim in the same direction. Their movement is less structured and more fluid. When it comes to reasons, schooling is often a defense mechanism, while shoaling tends to be for social reasons, like foraging or mating. So, next time you see a group of fish, ask yourself, are they schooling or shoaling? You now have the know-how to tell the difference.